I'm here with, uh, at the International Congress on Medieval Studies, and I'm here with Professor John Hostler of Morgan State University, who, and you, first of all, congratulations on just achieving tenure. Thank you. Um, Thank you. First of all, can you tell us what tenure means? Uh, tenure is essentially the institution um, taking a, a step forward with their professionals and saying, we believe in your work and we want to sponsor you long term. It's uh, considered job protection for academics, uh, which means you can sort of have more flexibility to teach what you want, to research the areas you want, with the knowledge that you'll have job security uh, coming for the long duration. Now, like one of the issues, like I think, in the medieval academic world is that we're producing quite a lot of PhDs, mm -hmm. and they're all looking for jobs, and it's a really tight job market, uh, and it's very difficult to kind of uh, get this kind of security. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, what was your process? Like, what what did you have to do over the last several years since you you, you finished graduate school? Mm -hmm. uh, I think what I've always done, and even before I got into graduate schools, I think I looked at the field and said, what do I have to do to realize this? And I tried to do everything I could do. So you go to conferences, you present, you publish, you never turn down an opportunity to do anything. If somebody says, will you contribute something? You do. Uh, you don't say, no, it's not my area. You find a way, right? Uh, you teach whatever classes they want you to teach. You do it well. Uh, you try to work on your teaching. And essentially, you, you have to give maximum effort. Um, there are some who will take a year or two off to maybe do this or that, it can be quite fatal. Uh, when you're on the tenure track, you have to be very, very careful and very organized about things. And so my suggestion to anybody who, is, who gets on the tenure track or who is an adjuncting and, and trying to land on the one is would be firing on all cylinders so that anyone on the hiring committee, if they say, well, we want a good teacher, we want a good publisher, we want someone who's good in the community, you're doing all of them. And so there's no shortfall. Does that entail like your workload is more than you thought, like as a graduate student, that you'd ever be doing, do you find it? Oh, absolutely. Like, um, you know, you hear in grad school, I'm going to get a job, and it's going to be like my professor's job. I'm going to have a couple classes, and I'll have my TAs yeah. to grade for me. At Morgan State, I have a 4-4 teaching load. Um, that can be as many as 120 students a semester, uh, with a significant research burden as well, and all of the committee work that goes into it. And, uh, by the time you get through a couple weeks of teaching the courses, writing all the recommendation letters, meeting in the committees, doing all the paperwork, and getting everything done, it, it's quite exhausting. And, um, and it leaves you spare time, so you really have to take all the those moments when you have opportunity to get some work done, you have to get your work done. Now that you've kind of achieved this tenure and you have this kind of, will you be changing any kind of, like, are you going to be looking for new opportunities uh, in terms of, like, finding, like, doing research or taking some time to take, go out and, and spend, like, a few months away? Will you be doing things like that? Or is it now that you have that? Do you have that opportunity now and we like be able to take advantage of it? I do. Uh, one of the things that, that generally comes with tenure is uh, pre-tenure, you want things that come out quickly. Uh, you want publications that will come out that you can put on your tenure application, and so speed is of the essence. Once you get tenure, you can slow down a little bit, and so I'm going to look at some projects that will take a little longer to come to fruition. Uh, they may not come out in two years or three years. Uh, those are the sorts of things I'm going to embark on now. You can spend a bit more time thinking about it instead of rushing full ahead. So absolutely. Your area of research is what we, I'd say 12th century, late 12th century England and France. That's why I've seen your papers. You've done a book on Henry II mm -hmm. uh, and his military uh, style and military way. Um, how were, when I first thought, oh, you're going to do something with Henry II, I thought, oh, that's something that's already been done. Mm -hmm. You know, 12th century England. Wow, that's that. Sure. You know, but you were able to find a lot of new ground. Right. How did you, first of all, say, oh, I think there's stuff here to talk about, mm -hmm. and then be able to talk about? Right. Well, I did some work um, when I was doing my master's at Iowa State on Henry II and on some of the Scottish wars. And I, I looked and saw that there were, there were a few things talking about it, but the more I saw, the most of the discussion on Henry were about the things he's famous for, the, sort of the supposed creation of common law, uh, the Thomas Beckett affair, you know, these um, Eleanor of Aquitaine, these things that everybody knows, even non-specialists, and not a lot on his actual warfare. And then I started to see some lines where scholars were actually um, summarizing his warfare in one or two sentences, essentially saying things like, he never fought any battles, he didn't do anything significant, he built a lot of castles, but he didn't get into a lot of wars. And the evidence I was reading in the Chronicles suggested otherwise. 
And so I thought, well, this would be a possible research topic for my PhD. And I, um, I pitched it to my major professor at the University of Delaware. And uh, we kind of went back a little bit forth about it and um, settled and said, yeah, this will be good. And it turns out to be uh, quite fertile, a lot of information. And many of the people I talked to about it simply said, uh, what you said, you know, I'm surprised this hasn't been done, and then others told me, said, well, we knew it had to be done, but uh, we were just kind of waiting for someone to do it, <laughs> and so, so I got lucky in that regard. Uh, and finally, just to uh, ask about what are you going to be researching now, like what, what work are you doing now? Right now I'm doing, um, I'm starting a manuscript uh, with a tentative title, it's called Writing Medieval War Through the Eyes of John of Salisbury and Gerald of Wales. It's a study of what I call military historiography uh, to churchmen mm -hmm. who have a lot to say about the conduct of warfare in the 12th century and the early 13th century. Uh, everyone refers to them. Everybody talks about Gerald and how you fight the Welsh. Everybody talks about John of Salisbury and Vigetius. Um, but no one has ever sat down and said, well, what do they know? What do they think they know? What did they say throughout their entire corpus of works? And as I mentioned before, it's one of those sort of longer projects. Uh, between the two of them, they have 22 major works, it's thousands of materials of um, written sources, plus all of their letters and things, uh, many of them untranslated. So it's one of those things that's going to take a little while to, to sort out. Again, these are people that are well known uh, and but finally, you're trying to get something about them that we... <laughs> I suppose that's my MO, finding people that we, we think we know everything about and you know, discovering that we really don't, you know, particularly in the military angle and fleshing it out. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.